1. So if I was looking at this problem, it says if negative 3 is a solution for the equation, x squared plus kx minus 15 equals 0, what is the value of k? All right, so they're asking what is the value of k. Now there's a couple things that I want to investigate with you, which I'm hoping you under, underline was the solution. What exactly does it mean when we have a solution of either uh, of an equation? Well, let's go and think back to something uh, simple that we know. 3x minus 6 equals 0. If I was going to determine the solution, what the solution represents is the value of your missing variable of x that makes this equation true. Now, what we learned in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 is to do that, we need to use inverse operations, which we're going to actually review again in class, in this class. But let's just go ahead and solve. So I had 3x equals 6, divide by 3, divide by 3, x equals 2. So 2 is the value that makes that equation true. Jennifer, look up here, please. Does that make sense? Yes. Should, right? And then what's also important about that is you can always take your solutions and plug them back into your equation to verify that you did your math correctly. I gave you one, right, Vanessa? What? You're done? Yeah. yeah. OK. Just, um, yeah, just leave it face down there. So you can always plug the answer back in. And just to determine, does that make sense? Well, 3 times 2 is 6. Minus 6 equals 0. 0 equals 0. Good. That's the solution. It makes it true. Now, what about if we have an equation that looks like this? x squared minus 4x minus 5 equals 0. Now, once we got into quadratics in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2, what we learned is you cannot use inverse operations like we did with linear equations. The reason being is we have now two variables that we need to solve for. One is, one is a quadratic, one is a linear, meaning one has a power of 2, one has a power of 1. So you can't combine the variables, nor can you solve it using the same techniques as you used before. So what we came up with was factoring, writing it as a product of its factors. So we had to learn how to factor, which again we'll go over in this course. And the reason why factoring um, was so nice is because when we factor something, we write it as a product of its factors. right? Write it as a product of its factors. Well, now I have two numbers or two expressions that multiply to give me 0. So then what I can use is what we call the zero product rule. And by using the zero product rule, I now have two linear equations I can solve for to find the solutions. Now, would you guys agree that I could plug in both these solutions in for x and I'd get 0 on the left side? Yeah. Yeah. These are the two solutions. I just solved for these two. To save some time, I'm not going to plug them in. But you guys understand that they would go into there. So the next thing I want you guys to understand, so that's going into solution. Well, then what exactly does k represent? So this is a quadratic, and this is a quadratic in standard form. All right, And let's equal the set it equal to 0. It doesn't really matter if it's set equal to 0 or not. Um, but if this is set equal to 0, guys, this is not going very well. If this was set equal to 0, what does that k, what does this middle term b, whatever you want to call it, what does this represent? What does that b represent? No? No? All the number represents, guys, all, the number rep all that letter represents is just a number. Obviously, we can use that number. We can obviously use that number to help us identify the vertex, to help us identify the line of symmetry and so forth. But it just re represents a number like negative 4. You wouldn't say, oh, negative 4, that's the vertex, or that's the line of symmetry, or the slope, or anything. No. Negative 4 is just a part of this equation. Okay, But we can use that to help us figure out that information. Um, so when looking at this, what I'm trying to do is, if I know that negative 3 is a solution, there's another solution that's out there, correct? Yeah, but it actually doesn't really matter. There's another solution that's out there. But I can, when I plug this in to verify, I'm going to plug in negative 1 in for what number? Which number do I, what letter, I'm sorry, am I going to plug it into my solution? x. So negative 3, I should plug negative 3 in for which one? x, because k just represents what? A number. a number that's a part of that equation, which we're trying to figure out. So therefore, now I go ahead and, so now I just plug in negative 3 in for x. And what I'm trying to do is find the value of k. Is that what they're asking yes. when I plug that in? Yes, that's all they're asking. So therefore, this becomes 9 plus 
negative 3k minus 15 equals 0. 9 minus negative 15 is negative 6 minus 3k equals 0. Add 6, add 6. Negative 3k equals 6. Divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3. k equals negative 2. So that is your final answer.